Hey there YouTubers, Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Today we're going to learn about how to use the subtotal function in Excel VBA. Uh, we have a question from uh, Mr. Dimas or Dimas. Anyway, he said he has a dynamic range and it changes in length each time a new search is performed and he'd like to be able to find and get the actual last row address in the format for example M100 each time and it changes and then insert this address in the formula so he wants to insert the subtotal function and um, through M2 through M100 and and put that in M101 so basically at the bottom of the barrel so if he had a list of numbers 1, 500, 16, 4000 and then he wanted to do the subtotal function here and if you use 9 you see that 9 is the sum of everything that we want to do so comma and he wants the range to be everything above it basically um, well in this case it'll be a it would be A2 through A4. So let's just pretend that this was a title header. So in, in parentheses, what he wants this to be automatically inserted every time there's some more numbers that come up, it'll pop in a new subtotal function for everything. So uh, we're going to work on that really quick. Let's just make this sample header and we'll extend that a little bit okay so we have our sample here um, we're going to learn how to automatically dynamically get this range A2 through A4 and if we add more entries we want to pop in that thing and in, in, in this case we won't use M but you can do it just as easily in column M as you can do it in A so let me zoom in here a little bit so we can see a little bit easier there we go and this uh, this workbook, this sample workbook that we're working on right now on the video is going to be available for download. So let's go ahead and we'll take this uh, subtotal function out and we're going to learn how to get that automatically popped in there. And we'll go ahead and just for due diligence we'll put a little button here. Let's use an ActiveX control button, not a form control button. We'll use this one here and I'm just going to pop in a button there by clicking. I'm going to right click and go to properties only so that I can change the caption. I'm going to say click me exclamation point. And now I can close this and it says click me. So when I click on it right now it doesn't do anything. We are in design mode and that's how we get the code in there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and double click on it while it's in design mode and enter the visual basic menu. We're uh, we're in already now the uh, command button number one underscore click so the click event for that button whenever it's clicked it'll run whatever code is here so I'm hitting enter to make some space so what we're gonna do since this button is located only on this certain worksheet we don't have to put this workbook dot sheets and spell out which sheet we're using uh, the, the sheet name is irrelevant because we can say active sheet dot whatever and that will <clears throat> allow us it'll automatically use the current sheet the reason I use uh, this workbook dot sheets and I specify exactly which workbook and exactly which worksheet address basically before we even get started with the code typically I do that because you really don't want it overriding another workbook that's you've put a lot of work into uh, because Excel will do explicitly whatever you tell it to and if you accidentally told it to do the you know the, the current address and you're actually running a macro that should have been on a different worksheet you're gonna be really sad um, especially if you save over it because it'll it'll just keep on typing junk and doing stuff to you to a different worksheet enough about that so we're gonna say um, first of all we need to get the last row so I'm just simply going to put LR for last row and the last row is going to be equal to the active sheet dot um, let's see cells rows dot count comma one um, check out my um, goodness I can't speak and type at the same time go ahead and check out my video on getting the last row if you want an explanation on this crazy jumbled mess you do need to memorize this portion 
if if nothing else memorize this portion right here it'll take you pretty far so what that does essentially it goes to the very last cell uh, on column one which is a it goes starting from the last cell and it does a control up control up finds the nearest cell um, going up using XL up so that's what we've just done and it says the answer is and we want the dot row so it says the answer to that question is 4 that's what we just did with all this crap right here so LR is going to be equal to 4 it's the row of going upward from the last row in column 1 uh, so that's how that works um, so the last row is going to be 4 in this instance and we want to utilize the last row plus 1 we want to start typing in something on row 5 so um, let's go ahead and, and do the subtotal function if he wants to actually insert the subtotal function instead of insert just um, I don't know if, if he wants to insert just the answer to the function like a solid number like if you wanted to shove 4516 into that cell that's one thing and you could use the VBA subtotal function probably but if he wants the actual function you know that whenever you change one of these it, this might change that's another thing altogether so let's go ahead and record a macro and I'm gonna double click on here and just hit enter so and I'll stop recording what the macro think what the uh, the recorder thinks that we just did and I'll check it out in module here is that we clicked on a5 and we typed in this formula equals subtotal blah 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 and then we hit enter or selected the next cell down but we are able to gleam the formula here this is good so the active cell which was a5 dot formula r1c1 equals and then in quotes is the actual formula we want punched in there equals subtotal 9 comma and here's where it gets weird the r1c1 stuff so uh, row and the row is uh, uh, going up 1 2 3 so that's relative brackets here so the row is starting here going 1 2 3 upward negative that's the starting point and the current uh, uh, yeah same column and then all the way to the row which is going up only one on the current column so we might not want to use formula R1C1 we could but um, we would probably want to use absolute references so it would be R2 um, instead of saying row going up 3 from the current position so um, we can change this a little bit let's tweak this a little bit so it would be absolutely row 2 in the current column and then the row would be it would be uh, negative 1 and negative 1 of course just means if you're here then the row is going to go up 1 if it was if it was uh, plus 1 it would mean uh, the 1 going after it so 5 would go to 6 so we want um, basically row 2 in the same column all the way through row uh, the row right before the current row in the same column so this actually looks right so we could uh, we could do that let's go ahead and copy and paste this nice little thing that the recorder gave us we'll go back to sheet one's code here and let's just go ahead and, and do something like this now we're not going to use the active cell because that could be anywhere that we click on so we'll specify where we want the formula r1c1 blah 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 to go but let's just roll with this um we're going to say active sheet dot um, dot range this is the range that we want to shove the formula in where is it we know visually it's a5 right but how do we tell them that so the range is going to be 
put your quotes A in and do an end quote because we're going to combine that with whatever the last row number is. And when it when it takes all that into consideration, it's going to mash up the letter A with whatever the random number it happens to be of the row. So it'll be A5 because 5 will be the answer. Actually, currently it'll be 6, but if I take this off here, so let's run our macro one step at a time. I'll put a stop marker here so whenever I click on my button, it'll take us to the macro, but it'll stop on my stop marker so I can hit F8 and debug through one step at a time. So debugging now, hit F8. Last row is 4. So and I already see an error of what I just told you to do because this doesn't need to be the last row, it needs to be last row plus one. Basically the next row, not this one, but whoosh, right there on five. So active sheet dot range, A, four plus one is what? Is five, so A5 is what we're saying. So in A5, the formula in R1C1 format is equal subtotal nine using blah, 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 this location that we already discussed a lot. I'm going to hit F8 and F8 again to finish off the procedure. Let's take a look. So subtotal of A2 through A4. Now is that what we wanted? Let me click it again. I'm going to take the stop marker off and hit play. So the subtotal function as you know um, doesn't take the actual sum of all these cells it takes the sum of all the cells that are not a subtotal function. So it's not counting the ones that say subtotal. That's what differentiates subtotal from sum. Sum will keep on adding everything that you've done and this would be double the number. But with subtotal it'll keep ignoring other subtotal functions. Subtotal comma nine is the same as the sum only it ignores other subtotals. So it's, it's convenient. You click on it and if you add you know some other numbers and then you click your button now the subtotal is only including the ones again that are not subtotal so you can see that that equals out to 4603 so that's pretty much how we do it um, and a again if you wanted it in column M I'm trying to think of let's see J is 10 K L M so column 13 is what you'd put right here um, you want to get the uh, you put column 13 here and you could or you could put M here uh, to shove that information in column M so that's how we do that again if you want to download this workbook please click on my Dropbox link in the video description God bless